My outer hip hurts when I'm walking, when I'm lying on my side. You could have hip bursitis, greater trochanteric pain syndrome, or what's called trochanteric bursitis. You've got this hip socket right here. This is your femur. It goes right into the ilium, and then this protuberance out here, and that's where a lot of the pain is. So just push your hip right now. Push on that, on that outer hip part and see if you have some pain. You could have trochanteric bursitis. We used to think it was just the bursa on the outside here. The bursa is actually to keep a tendon from irritating or getting frayed from running over a bone. So it's kind of like bubble wrap. But now we know it's the gluteus medius muscle that comes out, the gluteus minimus muscle that attaches here, and then we have something called the tensor fascia lata that becomes the iliotibial band, and we have the bursa, and it's all this big tension convention that creates some inflammation, some tendinopathy, and there you have a recipe for trochanteric bursitis. The music was fantastic. And I for, kind of forgot that I'm getting older and I hadn't been dancing a long time. The next day, I could not move. I felt like I was um, completely glued together. I couldn't bend. I could, I could hardly walk. So the pain is probably coming from the tendinopathy more so than the bursitis. So what is a tendinopathy? A tendinopathy is you have these load tolerance levels in your tendon. And so if the body gets stressed and the, and the tendon starts to rebuild itself and stressed and rebuild itself, and then what happens is it, it can't keep up with that rebuilding process. You get tendinitis but then a tendinopathy. There might be adhesions in the tendon, that, which is kind of scar tissue. So a process of degradation play, takes place, the lack of adaptation, right? And even like tissue rot, tissue failure takes place. It was very difficult for me to sleep on my side. I, my hip and all the way down through my knee was just hurting so much. My life is ruined this way. I love to walk. I love to, to garden and um, I need to do housework. So what does a tendinopathy need? How about a cortisone injection? Cortisone is a stress hormone. I was on a guy's trip and, and there was a 400 pound bear. We were hiking near a big waterfall in Yosemite and one guy just bails, right? A couple other guys were like this, right? I was a little bit further back, so I just hung tight. But that's what's called a fight or flight response. And at that point, your brain says, okay, is this bear going to bite me? Am I going to lose blood? Am I gonna be without a food supply? Am I going to be stuck out here in the woods? So it'll send cortisol out into your body to break tissue down and then to convert it into glucose so you have extra glucose running around in your, in your bloodstream to keep that brain alive. It's a great mechanism, but you don't want it in everyday life. And if you inject it into you, what happens is it decreases osteoblastic activity. So it decreases the ability for bone to grow. It increases osteoclastic activity, which is bone breakdown. And then it also creates chondrocyte apoptosis, a chondrocyte makes collagen. So it kills the very cells that you want to repair this area. So is it recommended? You might get some pain relief, but is there another option that will cause regeneration instead of degeneration in this area? Uh, Dr. Field used the Pisa wave on my outer leg and hip, and he's used it about uh, eight, 10 times when he he gets a spot where it really needs it and it gets in deep that it radiates out. I can feel it towards my knee, up in my glutes, and I can feel that it's releasing. And um, each time I feel a little bit better, a little stronger. So the option for me is the piezo wave. This thing it emits low energy focus shock waves. Focus meaning we can dial it in that blade of sound to go exactly where we want to the half a centimeter and break up adhesions, bringing neovascularization or new blood supply to the area, and then a stimulation of the chondrocytes to help them create, and the fibroblasts to create more collagen, right? So we have a regenerative, yes, I said regenerative. This can help regenerate the area, regenerate the tendons, decreasing pain levels, and helping you function better. 
I know it sounds too good to be true, but here's some research on it. An overview of shockwave therapy in musculoskeletal disorders. It appears that the mechanism of shockwaves first stimulates the early expression of angiogenesis-related growth factors, including endothelial nitric oxide synthase, vessel endothelial growth factor, and proliferating cell nuclear antigen, then induces the ingrowth of neovascularization and improves blood supply and increases cell proliferation and eventual tissue regeneration to repair tendon or bone tissues. Yes, this is amazing. Now check this out. ESWT is more effective than corticosteroid injections or home exercises in treating the condition. Combining ESWT with a specific exercise regime has been demonstrated a success rate of 86.8%. The big name like corticosteroids against the newcomer like extracorporeal shockwave therapy, this could determine which treatment you get. Greater trochanteric pain syndrome, focused shockwave therapy versus an ultrasound guided injection. At three months, there were no significant differences in baseline scores between two groups. So they both improved. It was a tie. Well, wait a minute here. These researchers were astute enough to actually look at the patients further on at 12 months. Let's see what they found out. At 12 months across all outcomes, the ESWT group had significantly improved scores compared to the injection group. The Trendelenburg test was significantly improved in the focused ESWT group, with 80% patients being negative compared to 20%. So an objective test for greater trochanteric pain syndrome says 80% for the ESWT group and 20% for the corticosteroid group. And the steroid group, really violates Hippocrates' prenum non nocere, which is at first do no harm, because cortisone breaks down and never builds up again, whereas the ESWT is regenerating. Let's go on. Shockwave has been shown to be very effective in the mid to long term, four to 15 months outcome in reducing pain and increasing the function of those patients suffering from GTPS. This has changed my life and I'm, I'm happy. I, I need a little bit more, but um, I can see a lot of progress and um, I feel like I'm getting my life back uh, to be doing some fun things. Pair the piezo wave with some stretching and hip stabilization exercises and you could have a combo that keeps your hips functioning and feeling good for a lifetime.